If I'm not administrative, then I'm gonna make sure that I bring into this organization administrative people. If I'm not good at foresight, then I'm gonna have those that are very intuitive around me. The point is, is that we, we want to make up for what we're lacking. Well, what is it like in the body of Christ? Is that we are connected to people that will not only bring our strengths to the surface, but also help us to see the blind spots. Well, hey there, welcome back. So glad uh, that uh, you're able to join us. This pursuit of wisdom, the pursuit of the lifestyle of wisdom, not just uh, insight for a specific problem, but actually the partnership in co-laboring with Christ, that the mind of Christ becomes revealed in and through us until it actually impacts and affects the course of history for everyone under our influence. That's my prayer. That's a mouthful right there, but that really is the heart of God for every one of us. I've got this very interesting verse, and what I'm trying to do is pull a, um, a verse or two or a half a dozen or whatever out of a particular chapter that we look at every week. And we're going to start with just one and then try to create the context. Um, it's uh, in Proverbs chapter 5, and it's verse 14. It's a very sobering verse. I was on the verge of total ruin in the midst of the assembly and congregation. Think about that. I was on the verge of total ruin. I was at the point of collapse, of loss, of death, of despairing of life itself in the middle of the congregation. This is a, this is a huge subject and certainly bigger than we will have time for today. But let me just say this. There really is safety in numbers. And it's not just being in the room with people. It's actually being connected to people. What we have here is we have, in this context, we have somebody who hated correction. In fact, if you look at the preceding verses, he says in verse 12, how I have hated instruction. My heart despised correction. I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to those who instructed me. It's in that context of being resistant to input that enables somebody to die alone in the middle of a crowd. And there is a, a very unusual warning here on a relational component that exists in every one of our lives. This warning of how, how you can be uh, associated in a sense of uh, in, in the right, you can be in the right church, you can be in the right small group, you can be in the right business, the right business associates, whatever it might be. You can be connected to all the right people. But if you've got that thing going on in your heart where you hate correction, you don't want to receive things that will adjust your life to improve your life. If that's the posture you take, you can die alone in the middle of a crowd. You can run out of gas right in the middle of a fuel station. Not, not, know how to draw from the life of the people that have actually been put into your life to make you stronger, healthier, and better. We actually are made much more complete. The, uh, the scripture makes it pretty clear. We are individually members of one another, members of a body. There's a seamless attachment from my finger to my hand, to my wrist, to my arm, to my shoulder, my torso. The whole point is, is there's the seamless connection of every part of the body, and it's the same in the church. We, we by design, have been uh, created to have meaningful relationship with people. And it just make me better. I'm, I'm better because I have certain people in my life. And it's not just, um, it's not just those who flatter, you know, it's, it's those who just complete you. Here's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in the Bible. And I, I, just, I just picked this up again just maybe four or five years ago. And you remember the verse that, that talks about um, the husband and wife, and it says, it says, and I will make a help meet for her. That word, I, I don't know why. I always thought it was, it was uh, that the Lord uh, created a wife to be the helper of the husband to assist him to accomplish what he was designed to do. There's certainly that element in, for, all, for both of us going both directions where we have that kind of a role of support to each other. But that word is a lot different than what I thought it was. It's a word, helpmate, is actually a word that God uses to describe himself in his relationship with Israel. 
he's certainly not one that comes under the control and influence of Israel. He instead is there to complete Israel. And what the word actually comes to mean that I want to draw out of this, this concept here in, in Proverbs 5, what this word actually comes to mean is that a wife who is a helpmeet, she is fully equipped to stand. My wife is able to stand to me face to face, making up in me everything I lack. That's relationships. That's what we do, is we connect with people that are strong where we're weak. Any president of a country, any CEO of a corporation, any uh, person who has a, a club or a gathering of any kind is going to attract people that are weak, or excuse me, are strong where they are weak. If I'm not administrative, then I'm going to make sure that I bring into this organization administrative people. If I'm not good at foresight, then I'm going to have those that are very intuitive around me that tend to see things that are hard for somebody like me to pick up, whatever it might be. The point is, is that we, we want to make up for what we're lacking. Well, what is it like in the body of Christ? Is that we are connected to people that will not only bring our strengths to the surface, to the forefront, but also help us to see the blind spots. And so here we have this, this crazy warning. He said, I was, I was in total ruin in the middle of the crowd, in the middle of the, the assembly, the congregation. I remember hearing this quote from uh, the late uh, comic, genius comic at that, Robin Williams. I'm not going to get the quote exactly right, but it was something like this. He said, the worst thing in the world is not to, to be alone, but is to actually be with people who make you feel alone. It's really easy to have just surface level, shake the hand, high five, and go our way and have no meaningful exchange. I, I purposefully, I'm, I'm a shy person by, by nature, I purposefully have to go out of my way make eye contact with the person. When I ask them how they're doing, I wait to hear and then make sure that I understand what they're saying. Yesterday, a good friend of mine said, how are you doing? I said, doing okay. I said, just okay? He said, yeah. And then went on to tell me uh, a very close friend of hers just lost their baby. And so there's this moment to connect and to partner. We don't get the opportunity to do that with every human, but we can do it with somebody. We can do it, have meaningful connection with people where we partner with them. I remember years ago, we had a, a group of people come to visit the church and, and the guy had a real bad back and I, I didn't know him at all, except in that one acquaintance. And, uh, and so we were able to pray for him and talk with him and, and minister to him. And I saw him yet, uh, I think it's like two years later. And I just remembered he had that back issue. And I, I wasn't trying to you know, impress him. I was just interested in how he was doing. And I, I said, hey, how's that back issue? And he was shocked that anybody would remember that he had that kind of an issue. That's, that's what it is, is it's eye-to-eye it's -eye connection and concern. We can't fix everything, but we're related to a father who has all the answers. And while I may not be able to give you the $100,000 you need or be able to fix this cancer that's in your body, I can pray and I'm connected to a Father who has unlimited resources, and yes, He can, and together we will pray for the destruction of that cancer. Being in the middle of the congregation is supposed to mean something. I encourage you, make sure that you're connected to people in a meaningful way. So I bless you with that, in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Our next session, we're going to look at chapter 6, and we're going to take a quick look at how wisdom affects our entire well-being. It should be fun. Join us.